I remember when I had first become a Catholic and we were sitting in a, a people's house. They had invited us over for dinner. And I didn't realize this at the time, but they were setting me up because what they did is they had invited a Baptist minister who had left the Catholic Church to become a Baptist and his wife to dinner and me and my wife to dinner. And he had us sitting right across from each other and they sat at both ends and they were going to watch the show. And we didn't let them down. I noticed that this pastor had a Bible on his lap and he put it under the lap under the tablecloth, but I saw him. I didn't even know who he was. They didn't tell me ahead of time. So halfway through the meal, he didn't disappoint. He said, well, Steve, um, just curious, are you born again? I said, yes, I'm born again the Bible way. And he says, what do you mean by that? I says, well, you ask the question. So why don't you tell me how one gets born again? I said, why don't you take the Bible off your lap? I saw it under there. And why don't you read for me John chapter 3, verse 3? They hate it when we know the Bible better than they do. Could you read to me John chapter 3, verse 3? Jesus said to Nicodemus, unless a man is, uh, you must be, in order to see the kingdom of God, you must be born again. Verily, verily, I say unto you, you must be born again. And he closed his Bible. And I said, and so what's the answer? How do you get born again? He says, by asking Jesus into your heart and asking him to be your personal Lord and Savior. I said, well, now I have a dilemma here today because I have to decide whether I'm going to believe your definition or Jesus's. Who should I believe, you or Jesus? I said, would you please open your Bible again? You always do this. You read one proof text and close it. Read the whole thing in context. He opened it, read further, chapter, verse 4 says, And Nicodemus said, How can that be? I'm too big, I'm too old to crawl back into my mother's womb. And Jesus said, You are the teacher of Israel, and you don't understand these things. Unless a man is born of water and the Spirit, he will never see the kingdom of God. I said to him, Jesus said, I get born again by water and Spirit, you say, by asking Jesus in my heart. Well, since then, and I did it on the radio the other day when I did a talk on this on Relevant Radio, I had my laptop. And if you haven't visited the Logos Bible Software display downstairs under the, by the bookstore, go check that out. Logos Bible Software. It is the most powerful, profound Bible study software, and it's just gone Catholic. So you've got all the encyclicals, the catechism, all the writings of Benedict and Pope, Paul, Pope John Paul II, the fathers of the church, the lectionary, it's incredible. It's been running on my computer constantly since 1990. So what I do now with people is I say, well, let's just see where it says in the Bible. We can, and all of these searches are in there. I mean, it's the most powerful program you'll ever see for Bible study. Catholics should have this and learn how to use it and be on the cutting edge of biblical Catholic technology because it's our book, for heaven's sakes. It's not theirs, it's ours. And yet, why are we the ones that don't know it so well? This is a good way to learn it anyway. So, I like to do a search. Let's search in the whole Bible, ask Jesus in your heart. Me. It's not there. Personal Lord and Savior, quotation marks. Personal Lord and Savior, search. Me. It's not there. You know, we just looked up two phrases that are not biblical. They are Baptist tradition. Those are not biblical phrases. They're not found in the Bible anywhere. Jesus didn't use those words. The apostles didn't use those words. They weren't used until the Protestant Reformation and even beyond. Mostly American revivalism in the last 200 years. So those phrases that I was using against you was really Baptist tradition and not the Bible alone. You have to know the Bible so you can call people on the carpet for these kind of things. So, I said to him, Jesus said you get born again by water and spirit. So I wonder what that could mean. I says, as long as we're still here for a nice long dinner, let's do a little Bible study. I didn't start this, remember. I said, God is va basically very boring in some ways because he always does things the same way every time. He knows how to do it right the first time, so every time he does it right. And how does he begin new things? He always begins new things with water and spirit. So, let's start at the beginning. Let's read the first two verses of the Bible. 
In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and void, and the water covered the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. First two verses of the Bible, the beginning, the creation of the earth, water and spirit. Then by the spirit hovering over the waters, the land comes up, sea and water separated. God takes some dust, forms it into a man, <laughs> breathes into his nostrils, and here we are. His first creation, the natural order coming out of the agency of water and spirit. God's going to start something else new. The Jews call Noah the second Adam. Because the earth got so sinful, God had to wipe it out and start over again. So he's the new Adam in the Jews' mind. And so the flood comes, and it wipes it, washes it all away. And all that's left is Noah in his ark with the animals and his family. And then what's hovering over the ark? With an olive branch in its mouth? A dove! What does a dove represent? The Holy Spirit of God. So Noah goes through the water, and there's a dove over top, which represents water and spirit. And I didn't make this up, because St. Peter, in his first papal encyclical in the Bible, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 18 through 21, Peter says, And Noah and his family were saved through water. And corresponding to that, baptism now saves you. That verse wasn't in my Bible when I was a Protestant. I don't remember it ever being in there. I found several that I don't remember ever being in there since becoming a Catholic. So water and spirit, and now there's a new creation, and God begins over again. Now there's another new beginning. The children of Israel are in the land of Egypt, and they're under persecution by Pharaoh. Pharaoh represents the devil. Egypt represents the world. And slavery represents sin. The three enemies of the Christian, the world, the devil, and sin. And God delivers them by the Passover lamb, and then he takes them through the Red Sea. They go through the water. It's dried up on both sides, but they go through the water, and what's over top of them leading the way? A pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day. The Holy Spirit of God over the water, water and spirit, and God saves them from the enemy and leads them out of the land of Egypt. And what's the new thing he starts? The nation of Israel. Every time God starts something, it's with water and spirit. And then in, cha in Ezekiel chapter 20, uh, 36, verse 25, it tells us that what the new covenant is going to look like. It says, I will sprinkle you with clean water. I will put a new spirit within you. For what purpose? That you may obey my laws. The new covenant is going to look like water and spirit. Now Jesus comes along, and John the Baptist is in the wilderness. And John the Baptist is preaching, and Jesus comes down and said, Baptize me. He went down into the water, and the Spirit came down, water and Spirit. Then Jesus goes up into Jerusalem. All of Jerusalem, it said, went down to see John. Everybody knew what this was. This was the news of the week. It was on the front page of the Jerusalem Post. Everyone knew that Jesus had gone into the water and a spirit had come down. And then Nicodemus approaches Jesus right after that and says, What must I do to be born again? And Jesus said, Unless a man is born of water and the spirit, he'll not see the kingdom of God. Duh! Why didn't I ever see this as an evangelical Protestant? How could I have missed this? I don't feel too bad because Nicodemus missed it too. And Nicodemus was, in, in the book of John, it just doesn't say a teacher of, of Israel. It says the teacher of Israel, and he didn't know it. So I don't feel too bad. But the fact is, is it didn't take rocket scientists to understand what water and spirit meant. Well, then it was time for dessert, and the conversation was over around that table. But the point was, is that when we talk about being born again, we have to ask what that means and how it happens. And when somebody says it in an unbiblical way or a way just following Baptist tradition, we have to know our faith well enough to say, wait, 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 slow down. Let's get the Bible out and let's take a look. Even in Titus, I think there's another one that Paul talks about this, and he says... He saved us not because of deeds done by us in righteousness, but in virtue of his mercy. In other words, God does this in mercy. How does he do it? By the washing of regeneration. 
washing, and the renewal of the Holy Spirit, water and spirit. That's how we become born again. And he said, the Holy Spirit whom God pours upon us, which is an image of the water pouring out on us in baptism. Now, if that's not enough, day of Pentecost comes. And there's going to be a big preaching sermon, big sermon. Now, you know, I live in Michigan. And when I was a kid, especially if you're a Baptist or Pentecostal or something like this, every summer they had revival meetings. Did anybody ever go to a revival meeting? Few people have gone there. And you get to say, the Holy Ghost is coming down tonight. We're going to see Jesus. And we're going to come forward to the altar and accept Jesus at the altar and receive Christ. And the Holy Spirit's coming down. And the music is going. And everybody's singing and praying. And everybody's going to get born again. And you come up and you accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. And that's all there is to it. And then you join a good Bible church and you're in. The first Holy Ghost got, and when they came to my house, up to our house, you know, we didn't always understand them because they came from, from Tennessee. <laughs> Jesus is coming here, you know. We didn't have, know what they were saying half the time. But the first Holy Ghost gospel meeting that was ever held was held in Jerusalem. And they should have had a big tent. I don't think they did, but the Holy Spirit fell down in fire in the upper room. I'll be taking a group there in about a month. Right there in the upper room, fire came down. And Peter went out to preach. And he told the people about Jesus. And they all said, what should we do? And Peter said, you must accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and ask him into your heart. Look, it's right there in Acts chapter 2. It's not. Peter responds, what you must do is repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins. Now there's this radical Jewish guy going around killing Christians named Saul of Tarsus, and he's knocked down on the road to Damascus. And on our pilgrimages, we show you right where it happened. The road that he was going on up to Damascus. And Paul is knocked off down onto the ground, and he hears a voice. And the voice says to him, why do you persecute me? And at the same time, in Damascus, only nine miles away, down in the valley from this part, there's a knock on this poor guy's door. His name's Ananias. He's left Jerusalem to get away from the persecution, minding his own business. And there's a knock on the door, and he answers it, and it's Jesus. And Jesus, he said, what do you want, Lord? He says, I want you to go talk to this man, St. Paul, or Saul of Tarsus. I want you to go lay hands on him. And Ananias says, he's coming here to lay hands on me. You want me to lay hands on him? Go pray for him. He goes to Saul of Tarsus, blinded. And he says to Saul, Saul of Tarsus, you must accept Jesus as your per... No, he didn't do that. <laughs> he says, why do you tarry? Why wait? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins. That doesn't sound very... Baptist to me. It sounds very Catholic. And yet this is what the whole story is. is the, the Bible teaches a certain way about being born again, and it didn't get changed until the last couple hundred years.